looking, as uh, Lindsay said, for their first home win. They played a, a very tough ball game, one that probably was winnable against Sacred Heart on Thursday night. This is a ball club that beat Sa Sacred Heart by five also last week. So we'll see. We, we had the feeling, John and I, that Lafayette probably could have won the game against Sacred Heart by five. So this should be a very interesting matchup, but there's some of that defense, and Miles Coleman gets the steal. They're so active, great hands. We'll talk about our impact player a little bit uh, later, Gary, but I'm telling you, he really personifies what this team is all about. James Lee actually is the man with all the steals. He's number one in the America East Conference in steals with 18 of them. Oh, that's pretty pass. Dropped off by Kyle Jenkins, C.J. Fulton on the move, and the Leopards are up by two. Well, that's one way to solve a terrific half-court defense is don't let them get set up. Lafayette does a great job in transition. NJIT a little slow getting back, and Lafayette made him pay. NJIT is led by Dylan O'Hearn, number two. He's number three in the league in scoring at 16.7. Miles Coleman's number five in their league, America East, in scoring at 16.4. They're in the America East Conference for just the second year. As last year, they were 6-10 and 10 in the conference, 7-12 and 12 overall. Fulton drives. Well, it looked like Fulton and Jenkins were going to share assists and buckets. But Kyle decided not to put it up. We're going to get a foul here. This will be on Leo O'Boyle. That was Dylan O'Hearn, number two, going hard to the basket. Keep an eye on him. you got to find him on the perimeter. That time, he shows his ability to get to the rim. He had 23 against Lehigh. They have played Lehigh, obviously, and they beat them by 17, 73 to 56. Also, they played Rutgers. They lost to Rutgers, 75-61. Lafayette beat Rutgers by a couple. The one eye-opener on their schedule is the overtime loss to St. John's. So this team can play. It looked like a walk. It looked like a push-off. It looked like a lot of things. <laughs> Everything but a whistle occurred there. And Lafayette's going to lose the ball on an unforced error. Well, th this is one category to look at. It's turnovers for the Leopards. And we've not played two minutes yet. And Lafayette has three already, or two, is it? No, three. I'm not sure they put up that last yeah, one. Yeah, a little late on the uh, stat sheet, putting that last one up. So the Leopards were the on only two Leopards were down that end of the floor, and they lost the basketball. There's Lee. They don't shoot a lot of threes, but they shoot a good percentage. That's an offensive foul. Yeah, O'Hearn put out the elbow and uh, tried to put Leo O'Boyle in the second row. Yeah, O'Hearn is uh, not a guy that they want to see get in foul trouble because, as we said, he's probably their best perimeter threat. He had plantar fasciitis last year, so he missed a number of ball games last season. Miles Coleman is their kind of go-to guy as a scorer, too. He scored 11 for more in every game as you get a look at their starters coleman double figures in every game so far 24 is his high he had that against sacred heart gary you can tell a good defensive team a good a well-drilled defensive team when they always force the extra pass as an offense you want to make the extra pass to lead the shots but njit does a great job of defending the extra pass cj fulton back of iron no doesn't go rebound matt fall if Matt Fall looks familiar to our fans, he played for Holy Cross last year. He's a graduate transfer to NJIT, and now playing against Lafayette, not as a Patriot performer. That shot from the corner does not fall for James Lee. Second bucket in transition by the Leopards, and as we said, it's something that they might be able to take advantage of. NJIT's defense is not the kind of defense you want to consistently have to attack in the half court. So Kyle Jenkins knocks that one down. Leopards by four. Grant goes to a 2-3 zone here. He doesn't play it a lot, but more of a 3-2, huh? Yeah. Kind of flat. Down inside. No, no it wasn't Neal. No, it was not. It was Jenkins. And after, after Jenkins kind of committed the foul, Neal was all set to block that shot. Watch this. Neal gets it. Yeah. Going to the line will be Fall. Fall is a is two for four from the foul line. They're 67% from the free throw line. Matt Fall has been around the block a few times. So that, that whole COVID thing with the transfer rule has really impacted so many schools. And you know, Matt Paul in a normal situation would have graduated last year, but here he gets a chance to play an extra year. Lafayette's first sub in the game is John Brantley, a 6'3 sophomore, averaging 3.2 a game. 
He's from New Jersey, good shooter. Brings a lot of energy when he comes out on the floor. Fall makes both foul shots. The Highlanders are on the board, it's 4-2. They shoot a good percentage from, uh, from the field, Gary, and it's important as Leo Boyle lines went up. That looked good right from the very beginning. Wow. Neil knocks down his 18th of the year. He hits them at 35%, and the Leopards with their biggest lead at five. It's a mistake defensively by NGIT as they went under the screen on Leo. You talk about their defense. Their field goal defense is number one in the league. It's number 14 in the whole United States, in the nation as they give up just 36% free throw shooting by the opponent. And we get a walking violation on Miles Coleman. Yeah, the zone defense has got them a little out of sync here. They're a little more aggressive against the man, but Lafayette's zone defense causing them problems. Gary, I started to say before, a team that shoots a decent percentage from the floor, that really helps your defense because it really eliminates a lot of the transition opportunities for the other team. Neil Quinn coming off a Season high 20 points and eight rebounds against Sacred Heart. Well, well, Leo O'Boyle. Two times he's yet to hit the rim. He has six. Boy, you can tell, you know, they were looking for him and he was looking for the ball. When a shooter is feeling it, that's what happens. Now they're two, three. It's kind of a amoeba type defense they kind of set up the way the offense sets up nice pass inside fall with a bucket absolutely that was miles Coleman, one of their leading scorers that time working as the distributor neil wants to go oh spin move way outside wide open that one's dropped by john brantley his sixth of the year he when that last possession demonstrated it neil didn't hit the bucket but he was aggressive with the ball in the post and kicked it back out and allowed Brantley to step into his jump shot. Neil Quinn has to touch the ball more if they're not for Lafayette's offense to be effective. Lafayette changes their defense again. They go back to a man-to-man, -man. little three-court quarter pressure. Pull up Coleman. Coleman is their second leading scorer and he drops his first field goal of the game. Miles is 6-5 out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Mentioned 24 in the last, well, not the last ball game, but in the Sacred Heart game two games ago. They're trying to win their third in a row. They haven't done that since January of 2020. And that's Eric Sonberg who comes in and Eric travels. When the game moves just a little more quickly than you're used to. And of course, you remember Eric has been sidelined for a week or so uh, with an illness. So he's getting his first game action in about 10 days. That time he skipped on the, on the dribble. Yeah, Eric was under the weather uh, coming into tonight's game, or today's game, Chris Rabio, a bit under the weather this week. He is available to play. Chris told me he was feeling much better, and he's out there right now, number 44, on Coleman. Coleman can't get that to fall. Rabio, pretty big force in front of you. He's 6'10", out of Skillman, New Jersey. Verbinskis, Fulton. They're kind of daring. CJ doesn't have a lot of shooters out there right now. Yeah, they don't, but. Verbinskis, no. That was a nice play by Brantley to drive baseline and find Verbinskis, but he couldn't get it to go down. Makai Gray is in the lineup, down the floor, nothing there. On the floor is uh, Miles Coleman. Okay. And Lafayette quickly tried to get down, gets up a three, that doesn't fall. And Rabio can't shake it loose. Rebound by Fall. Fall has a big body on the inside. You know, he serves a good purpose for this team, and he can do this too. You got to guard him. This isn't his first time in this gym. And he leads uh, all the scores for NJIT right now with four. Verminskis, kick it outside. Pull up. Brantley. He's got two in a row. Great job by Verbinskis to find the open man. It's a little shot fake, dribble penetration. Good news for Lafayette if John Brantley can find his stroke. He has missed one, he's made two. Leopard by 10. That was he's pretty quick, is Dylan O'Hearn. He got a little frustrated there that he got stopped. Lafayette defended him very nicely. Ooh, that's an interesting pass. How'd that work? Makai Gray, maybe rack that one back up. You'll see a very unique bounce pass. Well, good things happen when you put it on the floor oh. on the pass. There it was. <laughs> 
Very clever. Hey, ha. hey, another one for John Brantley. Feeling it. Wow. Leopards already have five triples. They're five for eight from beyond the orc. They came into the ball game shooting 32% with 69 of them. They now have 74. The Highlanders with just 49 triples on the season. Rabio with a rebound. Lafayette did not get the memo about the defensive prowess of NJIT. There goes Rabio inside. He gets stopped. No call. Another one? No. Halfway Very down. close. Halfway down. And Brantley <laughs> thought it was going. He was disappointed that one didn't drop. Butler wants to get to the basket if he can. NJIT doing a lot off the dribble. Ball again outside. He's got this one. Wow, nothing but net for him. That's his sixth. He's been dropping them at 26%. Yeah, when you can, if you're NJIT, when you can bring your big guy away from the basket, it really opens up the center for the offensive players to use their quickness. Oh my. Miscommunication there. Brantley, and we'll get a foul. Oh, oh, that's like a fall and push him against the back, uh, the lower uh, standard. Isn't it just like a Holy Cross starter <laughs> to come here and drive us a little crazy? Exactly. <laughs> Matt misses the first foul shot. And he gets the second. Right now he has eight points in the game. So he's, uh, he's leading all scorers except John Brantley, who has three threes. Yeah, Lafayette is five for nine from three. And so far, NJIT, a team that shoots decently from three, is only one for six. 21 is Suleiman Diakite, who is in the ball game. 33 for them is Kel DeGroff. Taking their time, four on the shot clock. Outside O'Hearn. Well, they got it to a guy who they wanted to shoot the ball. Rebound by Diakite, but he lost it. Yeah, and Leo, uh, Leo O'Boyle picked his pocket. Good job by Leo. He's had a good first 10 minutes here. Diakite and DeGroff, interesting story, John. Because of COVID, they spent two years here on campus because they were not allowed to go home because of the COVID situation. That one does not go for Tyrone. He battles to get it back, but cannot. So they spent two years without seeing their family. They finally got home to see their family. Prior to basketball, starting O'Hearn inside, that's too easy. Dylan O'Hearn is a scorer. Just knows where the basket is and can get there in a variety of ways. It's coming off a 16-point game against St. Elizabeth. Neil Quinn's been quiet. He has not scored yet, but he has done that. Nice back cut by C.J. Fulton. Fulton right now this year has, I think, shown a propensity to be the best back cutter on the team. Yeah, he really knows how to play without the basketball. And there's a hard move to the basket that time. That was Mika Gray. CJ and Fran, I think, is asking the appropriate question. He's saying, what is he supposed to do? Because the entire drive was the offensive player pushing CJ Fulton back, and CJ gets called for the foul. Well, it's such an aggressive play right here, and you're right. I mean, CJ just basically trying to get Brown and get out of the way. That's just an instance of the offensive player forcing the contact, and uh, sometimes that's what happens when you're big and you're strong and you're athletic and you attack. Akai Gray now with three points. He was on the all-freshman team last year. One out of two, they're four for six. Lafayette by six. Ball stolen, it's on the ground. They still end up with it. Picking it up was Diakite. Boy, it's hard to get a loose ball against these guys. They are so quick. When there's a 50-50 ball to be had, they normally come up with it. DeGroff will get it. Young man's from the Netherlands. Drive, up and under, no, doesn't go. What did they do? It was a late foul here. That it was, was a late whistle. whistle. Foul's gonna be on Rabio. Nope, it's gonna be on Quinn. They're gonna call it a two shot foul here. Interesting. Yeah. I thought the play was well over. Now maybe it's one of those had the ball gone in, they may not have called it. I don't know. And one way to get a, a scorer going, Gary, if he's struggling early, and you know this, is to get him to the foul line, get a couple of layups, get a couple of free throws, and all of a sudden, 
they find that rhythm. So you got to find Di uh, Dylan O'Hearn. Are you implying that I often I, I, struggled early? I, <laughs> I mean, I was trying to throw you a bone there. Well, you suggest to people that you could once yeah, shoot. Yeah, but it was one of those backhanded compliments. You could uh, you could once shoot the ball. <laughs> you know, when, when you're not good I early. I know, I know, right. <laughs> well, now you're not good late either, so. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm so old, nobody remembers my game anyway. I can make it anything I want. Yeah, look it up, don't. <laughs> oh, nice, nice, very nice. Another great pass. That time from Neil Quinn as he dropped it to Tyrone Perry, who went right off of him and cut right down the lane. You know, there's a lot of guys that can see the floor, but there are very few people that can really see the game. Neil Quinn sees the game, and that's how he finds people. The Akite trying to set a screen. He does pull up O'Hearn, try to go down inside. Running it down is Brantley, but he lost it. As uh, Makai Gray came and just took it away, picked his pocket. And we talked about their defense. You know, they've been burned in transition and an occasional back cut. But boy, when they when they get a loose ball or create a turnover in the open court, it's usually two going the other way. Lafayette with seven turnovers already. They came in just giving up 12.6. And we're gonna get a foul here. This is gonna be a elbow on Diakite, his first. A little arm bar that uh, Diakite was trying to keep Neil from making that first move. John Brantley Donberg in, Brantley out. I'm sorry, Gary. Brantley has had a heck of a first half of the first half so far, and that, that's good news for the Leopards as they try to develop more depth. Sure, Fran didn't like that he got his pocket picked there. That's probably why I called him out to chat with him. Kyle Jenkins. Wow, that's deep. That was deep. That's a four-point shot. Guess who had the assist? Uh, I'm going to guess Quinn. I'll tell you what. He just finds the right people. It's just as easy for Neil to take that little eight-footer along the baseline, but he knows where the strength of this team lies. Good defense. Drive, good defense. That's a walk. Oh, that looks wow. like a walk. James Lee inside, Lee up and in. Well, he, if he got away with a walk, he took full advantage. Oh my, that's not a good pass. Normal grade. I got this. D for two, <laughs> and you'll fail if you only get one of them. Inside, Neil Quinn. He's gonna, they clear out the lane area for him. And the ball slapped away. Neil working to get some quickness there. Good defense supplied by the Akite. Sometimes it's better if the big guy can kick that ball back out and then reestablish position closer to the basket. And uh, Neil had to do too much on his own that time against a uh, quicker defender. Fran obviously had set that play up off the timeout, try to clear things out for Neil. Wanting to get Neil going too. He's yet to score. I don't think he's taken a shot yet. Maybe. Maybe one, but I don't, uh, let me check. Neil Quinn is 0 for 0. Tyrone, no, doesn't get it. And, and it will be a shot clock violation. Gary, on that last review, well, we were uh, in break, the referee came over and when uh, NJIT got back and tipped the ball out of bounds, there were, actually it was a possession call, six seconds had gone off the shot clock, so they gave Lafayette 24. Yeah, the NJIT never had possession, so they had to make sure the shot clock was set correctly. Boy, through all of this, Lafayette playing pretty well. NJIT has a chance right here. The Groff. Cut this three. Man to man. The Groff inside, but he gets surrounded by white shirts. Drops it off, and we're going to get a foul here. I think this went on Rabio. It is. And I think it's on the floor. So uh, they'll put 20 seconds back on the shot clock. Boy, NGIT does a nice job using the bounce pass on the interior. And you know, Gary, I think we're seeing more and more of that as time goes on and players kind of emulate and try to imitate what's, what's successful, what works. Sonberg back in. That's too easy. That is too easy. That's a easy bucket for Matt Fall. Usually you have to switch that on an inbounds play, but a little miscommunication, ball came wide open. I miscommunicated, that was DeGraff. Oh, DeGraff, I'm sorry. I'll blame it on you. <laughs> <laughs> Rabio. again, it's all cleared out on that left side. Kyle Jenkins, he's been hot, back of iron, no. Rebound DeGraff. 
Quickly down the move, down the floor to Lee. Man, he just ran by everybody. They don't waste any time, and that long shot, long rebounded, served better than an outlet pass. Boy, once Lee got going, it took him about three steps for teams playing against the uh, Highlanders. Well, Lafayette, before this last break, was shooting 67%. That will not continue, pretty much guaranteed. Oh, there you go. The pass that led to the pass that led to Neil Quinn. And uh, to that point, Lafayette, before that bucket, had 10 assists. Guess how many baskets they had? I'm going to guess uh, 11. Unbelievable. It's an incredible percentage, and that really underscores how well they're running their offense. That shot, no. Trying to bang it loose was the graph. He could not do that. Sonberg, Quinn, Sonberg wide open. He'll put it up, it's short. But Tyrone will run it down. They'll get a fresh 20. In the corner, Sonberg. Can he do it this time? He's short again. The big body gets the ball. How about CJ? Uh, he did. <laughs> CJ well, Fulton. You can't, you usually can't give Lafayette one chance from three. That time they had three chances and you knew it was going down. That can't make Coach Kennedy very happy. Put him up by six. Gray. A good timeout by Fran O'Hanlon that time to kind of settle things down. Back into a zone now, back into the 2 3. O'Hearn to Graf. Lee slapped away. Jenkins mm. couldn't quite come up with it. Five on the shot clock. Gray has to shoot it. He does and banks it in. Oh my. Makai Gray, a last ditch throw. Puts it up and in. Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be basketball coaches. That has got to drive Fran O'Hanlon crazy. Good defense, and then that happens. Kyle Jenkins, no. Off to the right side that time. Lee brings it up the floor. Charge. That would be a <laughs> charge. James Lee picks it up as CJ just running along the side of him. He got nudged. Now, I'd like to give CJ some credit and say he drew that charge. <laughs> I don't think he had any choice because Lee just absolutely lowered that shoulder and uh, he found the middle of CJ's chest. Antoine Butler back in the lineup. Senior guard out of Philadelphia, PA. He played at Austin P and transferred. They lost a couple of transfers. Zach Cook, who was averaging 17.1 last year, leading scorer. He left for Hofstra. And San Antonio Brinson, he left for Texas A&M. So they lost a couple of guys as well as getting a couple of guys. Jenkins can't get it on the glass properly. Neil Quinn missed a wide open CJ Fulton that time. And it's rare to have him miss somebody. He just gave the ball up a little too soon. Butler pull up. So that's what another bank. Going Look, on? What's going on here? Found a spot down there that they like on the middle of that glass. Well, if you get it in that, uh, that square, yeah, it'll go in. That's what they say. Back yeah. cut, Fulton, he'll see now back up to 52%. So the gap's been closed. NJIT will ever just one for seven from beyond the arc. Gary, you made a great point before we went to break. Good defensive teams. That's a great spin move, wow. Left-handed. Your point before we went to break, Gary, was so well taken. Good defensive teams play great defense without fouling. And NJIT, despite the defensive pressure, really not uh, fouled a whole lot. And the Leopards do not, so far this year, get to the foul line a great deal. And obviously they shoot a number of shots from beyond the arc where you're less apt to get fouled. No, Quinn inside, shaking loose, up, block. Oh, oh, Did they call this on Neal, it's a bad call. It, look at Fran, I mean, he can't oh. believe it. And Dylan, uh, O'Hearn simply goes straight up. Look at him attack. He just attacks the chest. I think it might have been Jenkins. Yeah, but he called it on Neil. Oh, my. I would have accepted the Jenkins foul. Yeah, yeah. But Dylan O'Hearn, you know, scorers know how to, they just know how to find the bucket. But how many loose balls, those 50-50 balls, the quickness of NJIT, I think that's the difference in the game right now in terms of NJIT staying right with the Leopards. Quinn and O'Boyle, the two Leopards, who have two fouls on them. And that's why you're not seeing much of O'Boyle out there, even though he dropped his first two threes. He's had to spend a lot of time on the bench because he's got two fouls on him. Now, Neil Quinn has to come out of the game. 
Rand not big on playing anybody with two fouls in the first half. Rabio drops it off. Tyrone's been quiet. Well, he just got noisy. Yeah. <laughs> he has five. That was his 19th triple. The Leopards with eight of them. It's just a little three-man game on this side. They refuse the screen, and then a little step back by Tyrone. Gives Lafayette some breathing room. Back to a 3-2 defense now. Ball, turn around, no. And C.J. Fulton with a rebound. Just not quite as comfortable against the zone as they are against man-to-man. -man and the yeah. Lafayette will keep possession. Matt Paul fills a nice role for this team, doesn't he? Yes, Gary? he does. Just nice addition to this basketball team. Brian Kennedy's team won 22 games in 18-19. It's his 10th year at NJIT. Of those 10, four as an assistant, six as the head coach. You get a good look at Brian Kennedy. NJIT plays in that beautiful new facility, the Wellness and, Ave and Event Center. Way outside. Oh, that was a quick release. Not quite there. Oh, a couple of steps My there. Goodness. I think Fran wanted to walk there too. Yeah, do they just... <laughs> It'll be a one and one here. How did you get the sense they're moving faster than the officials can see? Because that sure looked like a walk. Dylan O'Hearn in transition. Eric Sonberg in. John Brantley out. Verbinskis is going to come back in. Foul was called on Brantley. Eighth team foul. Verbinskis in. Rabio out. Fran's got a bit of a problem right now is big guy, Neil Quinn, probably won't be back in because he has two fouls. And his other big guy, Rabio, is a little bit under the weather. The other little red flag here, and that's a little possibly as this game wears on, is Lafayette has not found its way to the free throw line an area once. Well, Miles Coleman drops that one. Not the case with NJIT. They have been there for a dozen shots, and they've made... 10 of them. So you want to see a big difference on the scoreboard. There it is. No foul shots made for Lafayette. Lafayette now playing without a big man. Tyrone. Oh. C.J. Fulton. A little short. And we're going to get a foul here on Verbinskis. His second. Yeah, and foul trouble is really looming large now. The good news is there's only 141 left in the first half, but the bad news is there's several Lafayette players with two right now, and we've talked about Lafayette's uh, depth situation where Fran is still developing that depth. Fran upset with somebody. I'm not sure if it's the, one of the guys in black and white or one of his own players. Right. Ball will go to the line. Ball's been busy there, three for four, now five for eight on the year. Got a nice looking stroke from the free throw line. And I think that Fran, uh, to your question, uh, got a little conversation going on with Jeffrey Clark uh, in, in the black, in the white, in the uh, striped shirt. So uh, that's probably what's going on. Fran's never much of a fan of officials. <laughs> <laughs> Off the court, yeah. he's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something happens when they cross that line. That baseline. Well, can Lafayette hang on to the lead going into the uh, locker room? Minute and 25 to go. Leopards by one. Verbinskis drives. Nothing there. Has to get rid of it. Fulton outside. I think he's got it. He knows when he has it. That's a great job by Lafayette to just handle the pressure and keep the ball moving until they found the open man. You know, watching C. Day shoot, he's got a rather unusual release. It reminds me, the last time these two teams played one another was back in uh, November of 17. Lafayette lost that game, but the leading scorer in that game with 19 points, as that shot doesn't go, was Alex Petrie. Yes, I would, Alex Petrie, what a... Great minds think alike, and when I saw the, the uh, high school tape of C.J., that's the name that came to mind. Oh, well, if they can bank him, we can bank him. Why There's not? A triple by Verbinskis. He is now two for 14 on the season, but that's a big two. Yeah, Alex Petrie, one of our favorites. 
what was he, within 20 of oh. being a 1,000 point scorer in the first two years? And then he got struck with an illness. Oh, that looks like a travel too. How about that pass? That was a no look. Makai Gray with the jam. Off yet, last possession they're hoping. Way outside, Sonberg doesn't go, and that should do it. That's good of them is with great ball movement, and Lafayette demonstrated that in the first half. Well, that's Coach O basketball, is to get people free with a lot of movement. Now see if they can get him to the foul line, and Neil Quinn just picks up his third foul. Oh my, on a day when Lafayette is really short in the middle. That was about as demonstrative as I've seen Fran O'Hanlon get, and he just kind of gave a one-arm wave off to the officials. Now he's talking to Neil a little bit right there, just saying, you know, get out a little quicker and don't put the referee in that position, but I'm not sure anybody in a Lafayette uniform was pleased That's with that key. call. That's key. Neil yeah. goes out 15 seconds into the second half, so we'll see when he returns. Good draw. Well, all right, Mr. Rabio says, I can block shots. Got to love that answer right there. It are, it, both, both teams with all their starters from the uh, first half, Lee O'Hearn, Coleman, Fall, Butler. And there's a bucket. And another assist. C.J. Fulton driving the lane and drawing the defense. Yeah. Lafayette with Perry, Jenkins, Fulton, O'Boyle. Now Rabio. Quinn did go out there, but uh, wasn't there long. Way outside, that's going to not go. Fulton with a rebound, he'll get hacked. Foul will be called on Antoine Butler, his second. An important few minutes right here with Neil Quinn on the bench. The later we get into this half, and I was just about to say this as we see Neil Quinn come back in, look for Fran to go offense, defense, any chance he can right now. He'll bring Neil in when on a dead ball situation when Lafayette has the ball. Good Lafayette score here, though Neil's gonna have to go down the other end. So we'll see how this works out. Inside, Neil up and no. We go, is he gonna get it back? No. And they're gonna throw it away. It's gonna be Lafayette ball. Great hustle. That's one of the few times on the floor Lafayette scratches and claws and comes away with a possession. There's Fall going down for it and just couldn't squeeze it over to Coleman. Tyrone Perry, five points, throws, that's a rare turnover for him. Down the floor, up, and it does drop. Basket for Butler. Boy, Butler, great defense, now he's gonna foul right away, but just the quick hands, you gotta be aware when you have the ball, and that's number three. One Butler. Nope. I thought the table said two, so let's keep uh, an eye okay. on that. Now that's what they said, Gary, don't, you're usually, uh, you're usually spot on with that stuff, so uh, let's wait and see. Well, we'll wait and see. Down inside, Leo, no call, and it drops anyway. That ball looked like he had no chance of rolling over the rim, well, and he, somehow, some way, it did. That's good strength by Leo, but he's shaking his head because there was a lot of contact on the way up. Probably should have been a three-point play. Fall outside, way outside, Coleman. No, Lee went over the top. That's going to be a foul. Oh, are they going to call this on Tyrone or? Yes, How fouls on Perry. That's a strange one. The referee, I mean, Jeffrey Clark is right in front of us and he Here saw it. Is. He was demonstrative. On the turnaround? Wow. Yeah. He did get a left hand up there, bit into the face, but. Boy, yes. What much of a foul. You saw Matt Faw got the ball and he's matched up. Turnover again by NJIT. All right, the basketball gods help. Rabio has to save it and can't. Now, if you're Lafayette, you don't want to play faster than you're comfortable playing. NJIT can force you to do that. Tough situation there because they kind of had half a break going on, but not a good spot for Rabio to try to field that pass. Leopards have led the entire game. Largest lead, 11. Uh, Tyrone, he's gonna go end to end. 
The only one that can stop him is Kyle Jenkins. He didn't stop bother. And Coach Kennedy cannot be pleased with that. Not only did Coleman give up the turnover, but he did not. Also bad. Yeah, yeah that's, that is a cardinal rule sin at this level. Oh, Tyrone again, he'll get fouled by Butler. Now we'll find out. I, I, according to the stat sheet, Butler, that will just be his second. Not sure how that is possible, but third team foul. Oh, Tyrone Perry on those two consecutive defensive plays. Your senior leader making the kinds of plays that you want your senior leader to make. Tyrone can do it every way possible. He doesn't necessarily have to put a lot of points on the board. He did score 25, however, a couple games ago against Cornell. Pretty. 15-footer, no. Neal's pretty accurate with that shot. Does not fall. There's a nice little play by Leo O'Boyle to create that situation. Diakite in the lineup now, down, and put. Tyrone almost had another one. Tyrone, good defense. All he did was go straight up. up. Good play by uh, DeGroff. Boy, DeGroff, that ball was going out of bounds by a lot, and DeGroff saves the possession for the uh, Highlanders. He's a redshirt junior because last year he had an ACL and MCL injury. Wow. There are, there are no other CLs, are there? No, <laughs> he covered, he covered, <laughs> he the, covered uh, the CL. The yeah. alphabet soup of uh, <laughs> knee injuries, and uh, but it, he's now no worse for the wear. He really moves nicely. I didn't know that. Of course, uh, Rotterdam, Netherlands, Richard that. Jr., 6'10", 230. Lee's been quiet. He usually has yeah, just four points. More of an impact on a game. Diakite. Oh. That one will not go. Rebound. Wow, Jenkins really got up. Tyrone. No call, up and in by Rabio, who hustled his way to a bucket. And it looks like Sonberg's okay. Kind of got cut down underneath, no call. I guess they're letting him play. That was a lot of contact, but you know, sometimes the best call, the right call is no call. Good for Rabio to be there to clean it up. He runs the floor nicely for a big guy. Yeah, they're going to when the Princeton Tigers come to town. And we'll finish things up a little bit later before we get into the new year when Lafayette will take on Colgate on January 1st at 2 o'clock. Gwyneth and Mercy, of course, will finish up the, uh, the year of 2021. Big bucket. They needed one, and DeGroff gets a three. That's his first of the year. As Lafayette has played a good first five minutes of the second half. They really have, and that three came at a big time for the Highlanders. They were in a bit of a drought. Lafayette was playing very well. Lafayette has that unit on there that not responsible for a lot of points. So uh, they would love to get things like that happening. Brantley hits his fourth triple of the game. He now has a career high 12 points. He scored 11 against Penn, the 6'3 sophomore out of Var Farmington Hills, New Jersey. Story of the game so far for Lafayette. Yeah, they got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be on the Akite. <laughs> and I'm looking at Kennedy, Coach Kennedy. Uh, a nice little acting job there by Rabio. Does a nice job. And it was. I mean, you know, the Akite lost his balance a little bit. Coach back Kennedy into wanted a flop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the old flopperoo. But, <laughs> Gary, so far, you know, the story of this game, if it persists, is going to be the Lafayette bench. We've got some numbers in a minute here, and they have really, we talked about Lafayette's depth, the lack so far, but Fran O'Hanlon wanting to develop the depth. Neal drops it off, Brantley. Neal will get it back. Look at this play. Talk about people touching the ball. This is why you get 16 assists for 16 made shots. That doesn't go. Verbinskis had a good look. One thing they track as exchanges in the offense. There are plenty on that Yeah, possession. exactly. It just kind of 
underscores ball movement. I'm starting to track uh, microphone exchanges. <laughs> oh, we got that. I am way behind. <laughs> <laughs> we, oh, yeah. That was, uh, I'm a good defender in that situation. Oh, look at the graph. Oh, he came over the back. It's going to be a held ball, and it will go to Lafayette. That will end up being a turnover by NJIT. They have turned the ball over now nine times, Lafayette 10. Brian Kelly now working, or Kennedy working the officials over. So it's a typical afternoon of basketball. Back cut, CJ kicks it out. Kyle Jenkins, no. That would have been pretty. Boy, that was pretty. That's uh, that's the Lafayette offense at its best. Oh, Hearn, no. Came right down to Brantley. Always find Neal. Can do a lot of things off the post. Jenkins, he's got an advantage here. Size advantage, puts it up and in. Great recognition. When the ball moves like that, you know, Gary, you got to move, but you got to move with purpose. The movement lots of times creates mismatch, mis mismatches on switches. And that time they found Kyle Jenkins down low matched up against O'Hearn. I, did. I thought that sentence would never end. Miss, I was trying to get my tongue <laughs> out of my... You stuck. <laughs> it never stopped me before. I, I almost hit the needle. <laughs> Down inside, that's a tough shot. Lafayette playing good defense. Quickly, C.J. Fulton. Got a man behind him, but he sensed it. Bradley, fuck it. <laughs> John Bradley. Do some deep research to find out if Lafayette's ever played a game where they didn't get to the foul line. That's the case right now. That one dropped by DeGraff. That's a triple. So that one matches Brantley's three, so the lead back down to 13. And every time he makes one, it's a new career high. That is not what you'd expect from DeGraff. We got him matched up down low. Nice, nice, no hesitation. Kyle Jenkins just lifted it up and put it in. Such a smooth player, and it was a two, it was about a 15 footer, but man, what a feathery touch. He has nine. Leopards with good balance scoring today. O'Boyle with eight. Brantley with 15. That is a career high for him. Oh, nice pass. No bucket. They need to keep up this defensive intensity as well as making sure that they have a wide variety of shooters out there. Gary and John, back to you. We don't disagree. We think as long as the Leopards continue to play tough D, They'll be in good shape in this one as they're up by a dozen. Kyle Jenkins inside, he wants to go and why not? Oh, made a nice move, couldn't finish, working against Keyshawn Mason, who's in the game for the first time. Lee has it blocked. Hard to shoot over a seven footer, I'm beginning to realize. Yeah, and Lee just found that out, Gary, but uh, it, you know, Fran, Fran was kind of holding his breath on that as Neil Quinn comes out. Nice job by Neil to go up and get that shot without fouling. 58 seconds away from being midway through the second half. Jenkins against Gray. There's Mason in for the first time today. Good defense. Lafayette's played good D the entire ball game. Yeah, it's it's nothing's been real easy for for NJIT. Another turnover. Carry on the move. One on one, and Tyrone said, "I'll wait." Drop it off for CJ. Oh, oh. everything but the bucket. Rattled it around. How did that thing pop back out? Wow. Good job that time. Defense by Leo O'Boyle anticipating the pass. Yeah, they're rotating very well defensively as Lafayette. NJIT, a very difficult team to defend because of their quickness and their ability to get to the rim. The irony is this team beat Stony, uh, Sacred Heart by five. Up and in, nice play. Foul on Rabio. Fourth team foul against the Leopards. And the bucket will count. Basket by O'Hearn. Dylan O'Hearn uh, leads them in scoring at about 16 or 17 a game. And you know, he finds a way. He does it a lot of different ways. 
That's a big three-point play right there to get it under 10. Psychologically, if you're NJIT, you know, you felt Lafayette kind of pulling away with this thing, and now they're going to bring some pressure. They were one for two the first two trips to the foul line. They have made the next 12 in a row. 14 for 16. Well, we had a tip. We had a kick. <laughs> we had a wow. field goal. We got a volleyball match going on upstairs. So uh, and a basketball team. Little broke every, yeah, right. <laughs> Just waiting for somebody to run, jump up and spike yeah. it. Lafayette needs to reset because the official decided to put the ball on the right side. The ball goes out of bounds over here. That's what Fran's saying. Yeah, look, yeah. <laughs> look where Fran is standing. <laughs> yeah. The coach's box doesn't extend that far. Jenkins, Tyrone, DJ. Another bad pass. Mm. Good defense by Mason. Yeah. Keep the ball from getting the kneel. Yeah, Leo O'Boyle that time kind of, I think he misjudged the length of Mason. That's a tough pass. Hustling to get it. Fulton could not quite get there. 19 seconds on the shot clock. Here comes for bio. You know, that last little sequence, Gary, you and I talk a lot about bounce pass in traffic, and that's the reason why. I mean, that was such a difficult pass, like hip to hip, with all those kinds of arms flying around and the quickness and the length of these defenders. Putting it in play, you get a look at Dylan O'Hearn. That's wow, impossible. what a move by Makai Gray. Off balance, soft, left-handed, somewhat on the glass and rolls in. CJ has it slapped away. And this is where the Leopards cannot get careless. They're only up seven now. They were recently up by 14. Let's take a look at it right here. And boy, Fran wanted them to look at that. I, it happened so quickly. But Gary, you're right. All of a sudden, NJIT finds itself with a chance to cut this thing to five. And that's a fat. Oh, they're going to call a walk. Wow. Oh, yeah. I mean, he certainly yeah. got bumped by Rabio. And now it's Brian Kennedy who's upset. Well, that's what, uh, that's what uh, certainly Dylan O'Hearn was saying that he was pushed from behind. That's, that's not a good call. That should have been a foul on Lafayette. They even out, right? Well, you hope. <laughs> <laughs> no hurry yet. Fulton, Quinn. Wow, they're gonna get a foul call on Keyshawn Mason. As I guess he was leaning a little bit on Neil Quinn. It's hard for us to see it from this angle. That you see his right arm right there. Yeah, he put the elbow. Yeah, on. yeah. They usually allow equal pressure, you know, if as long as you don't displace. How are you going to displace uh, Neil, Neil Quinn? Quinn? I know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's lost 20 pounds. Neil's in great shape. No, I mean, Tyrone, no, off the mark. That ball was def uh, that was uh, defended well. Lee. Lee up, nothing. Up yet. Leopards need to get a little run going again. And Fulton drops it off. Quinn got rid of it. Oh my, that's big. Big bucket by Kyle Jenkins. Talk about a team playing to his strength. How about Neil Quinn giving up a possible layup? Yeah, that's, that's probably a block. But and it will be a blocking foul on O'Boyle. At the other end, how about Neil Quinn foregoing the layup and kicking it all the way out? And boy, talk about confidence in your teammate. Kyle Jenkins knocking down a big three. Kyle two for five from beyond the arc. He has 12 points. Fran has done such a great job this afternoon of navigating the foul trouble. Really, just kind of picking and choosing when he gets certain players in and out, particularly Neil Quinn. Leopards have 13 threes in this ball game. And another turnover. 
Boy, we want to look at something that's been successful. That was an air ball and going down and getting it chased down. The Leopards have played good defense. Bolton outside. I think he's got it. He <laughs> does. <laughs> wow. He's got three triples. They have 14. That was deep. We could have reached out and touched him that time, right from in front of our desk. C.J. Fulton knocks down another big one. Suddenly, just that quickly, back up to 13. John Lafayette has more threes in this game. The last time we had 25 assists in a game was against Lehigh back in 2013. Mm. We have 14 triples, only 12 field goals, two-point field goals. Last time we made more was against Loyola in 2021, January 16th. We have, as I mentioned, 14 threes. We made 15 against Widener in 2019. Kyle comes up short on that shot, and that will bring Rabio back in. Here's Neil Quinn spent a lot of uh, jogging time <laughs> back and forth <laughs> to the know. bench in the court. He's getting more tired uh, going back and forth between substitutions. But Gary, you know, you mentioned the assist. The, the most impressive number, I mean, Fran O'Hanlon teams can get 25 assists a game. But when you're assisting on 26 baskets, it's, it's incredible. I'm, it's try, I'm trying to recall the one where there wasn't one. Yeah, it's a yeah. near perfect game. DeGraff inside, DeGraff puts it up, no. Jack Kyle Jenkins with the D. Take your time a little bit now, up by double figures. Brantley, career high in the game with 15. Does it, it's, it's unbelievable. He is, uh, <laughs> John Brantley with 18 and six triples. I don't know if we have a close-up of his body language. As soon as he let that one go, that was pretty impressive. I am anticipating him being our player of the game. Gonna go way out on that limb, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't had much uh, air time at all chatting with that sophomore. Get the ball back and get a fresh 20. This is going to be O'Hearn. O'Hearn, who's been somewhat. And that's 45 of their 69 points. Butler working against Fulton. John Fulton does not look like a freshman physically. Oh. I mean, most freshmen come in, they look like freshmen. He does not. Yeah. Look at this move. Oh, baby. <laughs> that one brought the house down behind us. Big Neil Quinn using all seven yeah. feet. He almost brought the entire house down by hanging <laughs> right. on the rim. You don't want 260 pounds Get. pulling that side of the gymnasium. Dave Blasick, our facilities guy, is holding on to his <laughs> chest over there. <laughs> there goes the budget. 13-point lead. A lot of credit has to go to the Leopard defense. They just get it off. Doesn't go. Well, everybody kind of stared when the buzzer went off and taking full advantage, Dylan O'Hearn. Everybody kind of let the ball just yeah. hang around. And again, it's an offensive rebound where the assignments kind of break down defensively. And if you get an offensive rebound off a long shot. That one does not go. Open shot for Fulton. Don't go to sleep here no, now. No, you can't. Yeah. This team, uh, especially when they're desperate and they have to get after it defensively. Butler working against Fulton. Butler tried to clear it out, and he did. No, he, no help for Fulton either. Yeah, CJ was looking for somebody, but NJIT did a nice job of kind of clearing things out. He That's got it. Oh, I <laughs> thought he had it again. <laughs> he didn't get fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two. <laughs> How quick is that release? It, oh, my. It was right there. Yeah, sometimes when you're a shooter, I mean, John Brantley's got to be thinking he's shooting the ball into a hula hoop right now. Just get it and let it go because chances are it's going to find the hole. Foul was on Antoine Butler, his third. Brantley at the foul line. This is the first foul shot by Lafayette in the game. And Brantley, his first foul shot for Lafayette this year. He is 0 for 0. John, back up. Ask the referee if you can yes. shoot it from three. 
Maybe they can make an exception. I think you have to stay in that circle, though. Got a chance to, to get 20 points here. Hey, got 19. Just not used to shooting it so close to the rim. <laughs> or having to wait to shoot it. <laughs> His release is just catching June. Career high coming in, 11. This is for 20. And no, 19. Here they come. They're only down nine. Four minutes to go. Oh, that's huge. And that does go. Basket. Oh, Hearn. He's got three threes now. And watch out. The Highlanders. Okay, and the graph. Plenty of time left. Lafayette with two timeouts. NJIT with one timeout left. There goes Fulton on the back cut. Jenkins. Ten on the shot clock. And they find Quinn inside. Outside, way up. That's off the mark. Quinn tried to tap it up and in, could not. Good job by Fall to keep Quinn away from the basket. Well, they got what they wanted. Neil, or, uh, Leo had a pretty good look at it, and Neil almost had a chance to stick back. Nice job, Jenkins. He made sure that uh, Horn couldn't go to the basket, even though Tyrone was on him. Now he goes to the basket, and Tyrone's going to commit the foul. So Ty has two fouls. Going to the line to shoot two fouls will be O'Hearn who is five for five from the line and has 18 points. He's 80% coming into the game, so uh, he didn't miss a whole lot. And it, should he make them both, it would be a four-point ball game. 23 is high this year against Lehigh. Well, they cooperated. That's their first miss after 15 in a row. Wow. They are coming with pressure. I wasn't sure they would. They don't have to at this point. But Lafayette has been so effective against the full court pressure. NJIT has been better in the half court. Watch out. Good play by Fall. He almost created a turnover. Can't float passes against these guys, that's for sure. Neal was open for a moment. Got it. Quinn, pull up. No. Not a good possession by the Leopards. 2.34 to go, up by five. You know, we talked about the defensive prowess, and could it come down to that? Lafayette going to need to score the ball a couple more times to put this thing away. And IIT looking to steal one here. Butler. Gray. Gray in the middle. Gray up, no. Rebound Jenkins, tough shot. Gray looking for a foul. So was Brian Kennedy. Good job defensively by, Le by the Leopards. Fulton thought about it. Tyrone's gonna make a shot at some point. And right now, he's your senior leader and he's the guy that's been here before. Can't do that. Nothing, no whistle, no call. O'Hearn, watch out, he wants to go to the hole. O'Hearn up, no, O'Hearn follow, no, oh, he got fouled. It's gonna be on Quinn, I believe. Almost threw that ball to himself off the backboard. Dylan O'Hearn, small relative to those guys inside, but he is so springy and quick. Number four on Neil Quinn. Well, did O'Hearn miss his one for the night? Six for seven, looking for his 20th point. He got it. He's Some a smooth player. Yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, folks look at the game, they see the free throw shooting percentage, but then you take a, a, sh a look at these percentages with two minutes left in a game, and it's different. We're gonna get a foul here on DeGraff on a reach in, and that's team foul number seven. That'll send Kyle Jenkins to the foul line. 
Good news for the Leopards because uh, even though they're only one for three, they only have one guy at the free throw line. And Kyle Jenkins, good free throw shooter. Five for nine on the year from the line. He's better than that though, Gary, I think for his career. Oh my. Ouch. Front end of a one and one, not made. John, the Leopards the other night, five for 11 from the foul line. Now they're one for four. So six for their last 55, and now one out of four in this game. Let's see what Fran has set up for this very important possession. Perry getting everybody where they belong. They want to find Neil Quinn. They found him. He wants to back up. And he did. Probably could have gone up earlier. He'll get key. They look better than that. Stony Brook picked a win. Vermont second, New Hampshire third. Hartford, then UMBC, UMass Lowell, Albany. And then behind NJIT, Maine and Binghamton. Be interesting to see how they fare. Ooh, O'Haron had a lot of room there to drive. Here's O'Hearn again, working against Rabio and puts it up and in. It's a one point game, O'Hearn with seven, 27 points. How about the defensive strategy? They've got Chris Rabio on. The graph has been the most effective defender on Quinn. Now they put the graph off of Quinn and they have brought in uh, Diakite to play him. Eight on the shot clock. They got it. Oh, what a catch and a foul. What a catch of the basketball by Quinn. <laughs> and certainly Makai Gray thought he got a clean block. Watch, Let's see. Watch six, four go up. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Oh, my. Looks like he got a little bit of arm. Kai thought he did not. Thought he got all ball. Huge foul shots. Boy, how about the big guy? That's huge right there. Three for three. He's had the last three. Oh, it doesn't go. It's a two-point game. Hang on. You see all the numbers right there in the center of your screen. You know they want to find O'Hearn. We're going to get a foul here on Fulton. It'll be a two-shot foul going up. A little surprised that it was Butler that was creating this situation. Yeah, Butler right. is five for nine from the foul line, has not been there today. Brian Kennedy wanted a goal 10, but there's no way. And the referee outside saw it right away. You see the signal right there. That ball was on its way up. Good defense by Neil Quinn. Antoine Butler, six points, has not been to the line. And he got the first one. Looked pretty good doing it, too. Rotation was perfect. Here we go. To tie the game with 2.7 seconds on the clock. Wow. We're knotted up. First tie of the basketball game. They want their third win, their first at home. Boy, this kid has been all over the place doing everything. Dylan O'Hearn we're talking about. Will we get a look at the Highlanders' first lead in the game? O'Hearn down, O'Hearn up, then he kissed it off the glass for the first time. It's a Highlander lead. O'Hearn now with 29. Both teams get a timeout in the overtime. Quinn with a spin move. Slapped away, defense by Fall. That Fall, not his first rodeo when he saw Neal exposed the ball on the spin move and tapped it away from behind. Ooh. 
would be a difficult couple of ball games in a row for Lafayette. Should they not come away with a W here, they felt they certainly had a good shot at winning the Sacred Heart game. How does that happen? Well, nowhere to go. Ball found a way to get out of there. He thought he got mugged. Wow. Ball came right back to O'Hearn, too. Here's a quick release. That doesn't go. Lafayette rebound. Fulton, Fulton quickly down the floor. Drops it to John Kyle Jenkins, and he gives it right back. Last time the Leopards had a single overtime win was at American in 2019. The last time they lost was at Lehigh in 2021, January 2nd. And they are 0 for so far in overtime. You know who's kind of an understated player on this NJIT team is, is Antoine Butler. You know, he really kind of doesn't stand out on the stat sheet, but, you know, he really is kind of a, a stabilizer out there. He's been on the floor as much as anybody. He's got the ball. He gets the screen. Wide open fall. Fall puts it up. No. Rebound Kyle Jenkins again. Leopards 0 for 2 in possession. Let's see if they can score here. That doesn't go. Yeah, Tyrone I'm, without a, well, he has one three in the game, seven yeah. points. And he's been uh, quieter than we normally see Tyrone. His running mate, John Brantley, has picked up the slack. We've already played almost three minutes of overtime. One bucket. Get a hand up. Butler, Fulton on him. He'll get a screen. He'll put it up. He's been the hero here. No, doesn't go. Rebound, nobody. It's going to end up with Neil Quinn. Ball came through and kind of cleared, cleared the lane out. Didn't come up with the ball. Fulton gets it back. How about the freshman coming of age? Quinn. Get a kick here. So they'll reset the clock to 20. Well, here comes John Brantley. John Brantley, career high 19 points. Thought we might get another chance to see him. He's had such a hot game. Back in for the Highlanders, there's Diakite. I'll tell you, Matt Fall has given them oh. great minutes. He really has. Big. For the lead. Nope, doesn't go. Look at Leopards the have not made a shot in overtime. Wow. Yeah, I know. The only bucket from Dylan O'Hearn. Kind of get the sense that if NJIT gets one right here, the way they play defense, Lafayette needs a stop. Brantley on O'Hearn, so that's a tough task for the sophomore. And O'Hearn has it. Down inside to Diakite. Back outside, they've got to put it up. And it's blocked. That will be a shot clock violation. It will go to Lafayette. Kyle Jenkins on the closeout. And one of the first things Fran O'Hanlon teaches defensively is close out high and hard. That's high and hard right there, and he blocks the three-point attempt. And the Leopards find a score. Under a minute already. It's a 2-0 overtime. Quinn, oh, ah, that's not foul. Well, we're tied. Neil worked for it, he got it. That time, he kicked the ball back out and repositioned. Got an eight second differential, is that what you mentioned, Gary? Yes. You did. John, do you try to use all? No, I see. I wouldn't, Gary, because now you're playing against the shot clock and the defense. Here's O'Hearn. They wanted to get him open. He's got Rabio on him. Puts it up and in. He just simply let Rabio fly by. Lafayette Jenkins. He'll get fouled. Oh boy. Foul is on Butler. Butler's done. That's his. And they have put Tyrone Perry, the veteran, on him. Here we go. He's got the ball. Soft pressure, 
There's O'Hearn to win it. No. Jenkins rebound. But yeah, they don't do not. They don't lose. They lose a different type of player when they lose Butler. But Lee certainly can have a major impact, as John mentioned, leading the team in assists and steals. Probably one of the reasons why Lafayette is where they are because he's been quiet. But boy, has Dylan O'Hearn exploded. Well, Lafayette did not get the first two points of the last overtime. Get it the first three here? Nope. Comes right to O'Hearn. Well, inside out, they collapse down on Neil Quinn, and Leo O'Boyle has a shot that he normally loves. O'Hearn. Well, he just lets people fly by him. O'Hearn with a career game, 33 points. Man thought he walked on that play, but boy, I'll tell you what, he's just so crafty with that shot fake. Well, the Leopards again, much like they were in the first overtime, find themselves down by two. And it took them about three minutes to get that two back. Well, they got the memo on Brandley because James Lee is playing him now. Jenkins, security pass. And another jam by Neil Quinn. Neil with 13, nice pass, Jenkins. Almost a better catch because that was a fastball through everybody's arms and it hit Neil right in the chest. <laughs> the guys behind us are funny. Oh, I know. Yeah, they got some good. O'Hearn again. Yep. Can't be stopped. Great coaching tip from the second row. Watch number two especially now. That was good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, especially. I would say especially. That's why everyone thinks they can coach. Watch number two especially. <laughs> Boy, Fall and Quinn going at it. Quinn again. Ooh. Oh, I think they're going to catch. Unbelievable turn of events. We're tied. <laughs> and he stays out on the floor. Wow. Well, I hope Nancy O'Hanlon is here because trying to explain this to her <laughs> when you go home. <laughs> hey, Fran, how did we do tonight? <laughs> well, it started that's, here. That's our job. That's and right. We can't do it. A little bit uh, more difficult today. Eighty-three, eighty-three. That's short. And Lafayette, can they possibly take an overtime lead? Would Two and be, a half minutes to go. It would be their first in either overtime or any of the overtimes. Is that right? Are we three or two? Well, there's not much more you could have covered there yet, uh, yeah. either, any? I, I don't know. All? <laughs> <laughs> I want to go home. I think we get the picture. <laughs> That's Brantley. Brantley! How Ooh. fitting would that have been? That was right there, too, just a little short. Way outside. There's oh, the boy. guy. Three. That's ridiculous. Oh, my goodness. How about the find by Gray? I mean, how did he see him? He has five triples. He has 38 points. Nice hands by Brantley, nearly a turnover. Now we're down three, so things are becoming even a little bit more critical. Brantley. Oh, he wanted it. Five on the shot clock. That's way off the mark. At least it hit the rim, but we couldn't get the rebound. NJIT doing a nice job finding the right people. Lafayette needs to stop now. A minute and 10 to go. Lead a fall. Now with a three point lead, Gary, they probably won't mind taking as much time as the graph. That's right on. Bodies, oh. Lafayette's got numbers if they can find an open player. They got Neal. Kyle to tie it. You oh, got oh. Kyle Jenkins! <laughs> His third of the game. How about the decision by Neal Quinn to find? That's the second time we've seen that happen. Every instinct in basketball would have told Neal to take that shot. And he didn't. O'Hearn. Foul. And you notice he takes his time till he gets his hands on the ball, and then it's go time for O'Hearn. 
needs a bucket, and here comes the Highlander defense. Jenkins, a three may win it. A two will tie it. Ten on the, on the game clock. Perry, oh no. O'Hearn's gonna get the, oh, he's gonna get fouled. Foul on Brantley, and it'll be a two-shot foul if he makes both of them no chance. One of them, maybe. Can Dylan O'Hearn do anything else? What an incredible game by this young man. And you know, Gary, you, you mentioned his 40 points. Did he ever go out of the game? I don't know, you know? Uh, oh, her no, no, 40, no, 50 minutes in yeah. the game at the moment. And this is the thing. Now, I've got my last stat sheet has 21 attempts. How many attempts? Because uh, 24. So he's got 42, 42 points, 20. That's incredible. Come on in. 